Once upon a time, there was a world filled with chaos and competition. Each person was out for themselves, fighting tooth and nail to get to the top alone. It seemed as though there was no hope for a better tomorrow. But then, a book inspired by Tibetan Buddhist teachings emerged, promising a world based on altruism and care for one another. The question was, how could such a world ever be achieved? The book revealed a few simple daily steps that could make a world of difference. Through meditating and practicing empathy, society could make large strides toward a new world that was happier and even more successful. It sounded almost too good to be true. However, as readers delved deeper into the book, they discovered some truly fascinating facts. Neuroscience had actually proven the power of altruism. And by using Buddhist thinking, it was possible to lessen feelings of pain and negativity. But perhaps the most surprising revelation was that the worst of times could actually bring out the best in people. In a world that seemed so bleak, it was an incredibly hopeful message. As more and more people began to implement the book's teachings into their daily lives, something incredible began to happen. People started to care for one another in a way they never had before. Acts of kindness and empathy became the norm, and the world started to transform before their very eyes. It wasn't an easy journey, but it was worth it. The world was no longer a place of competition and chaos, but a place of harmony and kindness. All thanks to a little book that showed the power of altruism and care for one another. Chapter 1. A young woman named Mia who was struggling to find her place in the world. She had always been a compassionate person, but as she grew older, she found herself increasingly drawn to material possessions and personal gain. One day, while scrolling through social media, Mia came across a post about the power of altruism. The more she read, the more she realized how much she had been missing in her life. She longed to develop her own sense of altruism, but she wasn't sure how to do it. As she dug deeper into the topic, she discovered that there were actually two types of altruism, natural and developed. Mia was relieved to learn that she already had some natural altruism within her, but she knew that she wanted to cultivate the second type as well. To do this, she knew she had to take a deep look inside herself. She realized that, like most people, she desired happiness and wished to avoid suffering. But she wanted to expand this insight to include all beings, not just herself. As she delved into the teachings of Tibetan Buddhism, Mia discovered the concept of the Bodhisattva, someone who devotes their entire life to ending the suffering of as many beings as possible. She was inspired by this idea and wanted to become a Bodhisattva herself. To do this, she had to take certain vows and promises. She knew it wouldn't be easy, but she was willing to dedicate her life to this spiritual quest. As Mia began to put these teachings into practice, she started to notice changes within herself. She felt more connected to the world around her and more aware of the suffering of others. She found joy in helping others and saw the beauty in the smallest acts of kindness. Over time, Mia's altruism continued to grow and expand. She became a true bodhisattva, dedicating her life to ending the suffering of others and helping them attain spiritual enlightenment. And in doing so, she found her true purpose in life and a sense of fulfillment that she had never known before. Chapter 2. A man named John who felt lonely and disconnected from the world around him. He had tried everything, from joining clubs to going on vacations, but nothing seemed to fill the void inside him. One day, John stumbled upon a book about love and altruism. As he read, he learned that love wasn't just a feeling that you receive from others, but something that you could cultivate within yourself. John started to practice loving-kindness meditation every day where he would silently repeat mantras of love and compassion for himself and others. Slowly but surely, he began to feel a change within him. He felt more patient, kinder, and more connected to the world around him. One day, John decided to put his newfound love into action. He volunteered at a local soup kitchen, helping to serve meals to the homeless. As he interacted with the people there, he noticed something remarkable happening. The more love and compassion he showed, the more love and compassion he received in return. The homeless people there opened up to him, sharing their stories and struggles. 
They even started to help each other, sharing food and blankets. John realized that his love had become contagious. And as he continued to spread love and kindness to those around him, he saw more and more people doing the same. It was like a ripple effect, spreading out and touching the lives of countless people. In the end, John realized that love wasn't just something he had been searching for. It was something that he could give freely and abundantly to the world. And as he did, he found that his life was transformed in ways he had never thought possible. Chapter 3 There was a small town called Rossville where everyone knew each other. In this town, there were two brothers named Jack and Mike, who were identical twins. They grew up together, played together, and even went to the same schools. But as they got older, they became vastly different people. Jack became a criminal, often getting in trouble with the law. Mike, on the other hand, became a doctor, dedicating his life to helping others. This puzzled everyone in the town. How could two people with the same genes end up so differently? It wasn't until a group of scientists came to Rossville to study the people that they began to unravel the mystery. They were particularly interested in studying the effects of epigenetics on a person's behavior. The scientists approached the twins and asked them a series of questions about their lives. They also collected DNA samples from both brothers. After analyzing the samples, the scientists found that the expression of certain genes was different between the two brothers. They concluded that the reason for the vast difference in behavior was due to epigenetics. The brothers had been exposed to different environments and situations, which led to the expression of different genes. Jack had been surrounded by a negative environment, leading to the expression of genes associated with criminal behavior. Mike, on the other hand, had been surrounded by a positive environment, leading to the expression of genes associated with altruistic behavior. The scientists' discovery made headlines, and people around the world began to question whether they too could change their behavior by altering the expression of their genes. Soon, people in Rossville began to practice altruism more often, hoping to cultivate more positive gene expression. And over time, the town became known for its kindness and generosity, inspiring others to do the same. Chapter 4 In a small town, there was a man named Jack who believed in the power of ego. He thought that the only way to succeed was by focusing on his own needs and ignoring everyone else. Jack was a ruthless businessman who never cared about anyone but himself. One day, Jack received a letter from a local orphanage asking for a donation to help the children. Jack ignored it, thinking it was just a waste of his time and resources. But soon, Jack's business began to suffer. His employees became unhappy, and his customers started to go elsewhere. Jack couldn't understand what was happening. He had always believed that selfishness was the key to success. One day, Jack's doctor told him that he needed to have a heart surgery. Jack was scared and didn't know what to do. As he lay in the hospital bed, Jack started to reflect on his life. He realized that he had been living a lie, and that he had hurt a lot of people along the way. He began to regret all the opportunities he had missed to help others and make a positive impact. After his surgery, Jack decided to change his ways. He started volunteering at the local orphanage and helping the children. He also began to treat his employees with more compassion and respect. As time went on, Jack's business started to thrive again. His employees were happy and his customers came back. Jack had finally learned the true power of altruism and how it could make a positive impact on his life and the lives of others. In the end, Jack realized that the key to success was not just about making money, but also about making a positive impact in the world. He had found a new purpose in life, and it was one that would bring him more happiness and fulfillment than he had ever imagined. Chapter 5 Kara had always felt a deep desire to help others. She had tried volunteering at different organizations, donating money to charity and even taking part in relief missions. But no matter how much she did, it never felt like enough. She always felt like there was something missing. One day, a friend recommended meditation to her. Kara was skeptical at first, but decided to give it a try. She started with just a few minutes a day, gradually building up to a full 30-minute session. As she meditated, 
Kara began to feel a sense of calm and clarity that she had never experienced before. The worries and stress of everyday life seemed to melt away, and she felt a newfound sense of focus and energy. But it wasn't just her own well-being that was changing. As she continued to meditate, Kara noticed a shift in her perspective. She started to see the world and the people in it with more kindness and empathy. She found that she was more patient with others, more willing to listen and more compassionate. Kara realized that the strength and patience that meditation had cultivated in her was not just for her own benefit. It was a tool that she could use to better help others. She started to incorporate meta meditation into her practice, sending feelings of love and compassion not just to herself, but to everyone around her. And as she did, she found that her desire to help others was becoming more focused and effective. She began volunteering at a local hospice, offering comfort and support to those in their final days. It wasn't always easy, there were moments of physical and emotional pain that threatened to overwhelm her. But Kara found that the skills she had learned through meditation, the ability to manage her own pain and remain present in difficult situations, were invaluable. Over time, Kara's work at the hospice began to have a ripple effect in the community. People who had been touched by her kindness and compassion started to pay it forward, reaching out to others in need and creating a web of support and love. And all of it started with just a few minutes of meditation each day, a simple practice that had the power to change not just one person, but the world. Chapter 6. As a child, James dreamed of becoming a hero. He watched movies and read comics that featured characters who saved lives and were loved and admired by all. But as he grew older, he began to understand the true nature of heroism. James's small town was hit by a devastating tornado. It destroyed homes and businesses, and left many families without shelter or basic necessities. James, along with his family and friends, volunteered to help clear debris and provide aid to the survivors. During one of their missions, James and his group came across a family who had been trapped in their home. The house was on fire and the family was frantically trying to escape. James knew he had to act fast. He ran into the burning house and pulled the family out to safety. As the news of James's heroism spread, he received a lot of attention and praise from the local media. But he quickly became uncomfortable with all the attention. James realized that his actions were driven by a desire to help, not by a desire for recognition. He began to reflect on the true nature of heroism. He saw that true heroes do what is necessary, even when no one is watching. They don't seek recognition or fame. They act out of compassion and a sense of duty. James realized that he didn't need to be a hero in the eyes of others to be a hero. He had already become a hero in the eyes of those he had helped. He learned that true heroism is not about the recognition, but about the act itself. Years later, James became a firefighter. He didn't do it for the recognition or the praise. He did it because he knew that it was the right thing to do. He became a true hero, quietly and humbly helping those in need, just like he had done during the tornado in his hometown. Chapter 7. Meet Alex, a successful businessman who owns multiple companies and has a net worth of millions of dollars. Alex is used to living the high life, with private jets, expensive cars, and designer clothing. But something has been nagging at him lately, a feeling that all this wealth and extravagance isn't bringing him true happiness. One day, Alex takes a walk through a poorer part of the city, and he's struck by the contrast between his opulent lifestyle and the struggles of the people he sees. He passes a homeless shelter where families are living in cramped conditions, and he can't help but wonder how they survive. As he continues on his walk, he sees a group of people handing out food and supplies to the homeless. They seem so happy and fulfilled by their simple act of kindness, and Alex realizes that he's never felt that kind of satisfaction from all his material possessions. He begins to research ways that he can use his wealth to make a positive impact on the world. He starts donating to charities and volunteering at local shelters, and he's surprised by how much joy it brings him. But as he delves deeper into the issue of inequality, he realizes that his wealth is part of the problem. The economic system that allowed him to accumulate so much wealth is the same system that perpetuates inequality and distrust in society. 
Alex decides to use his business acumen to create a more equitable economic system. He starts by implementing fair wages and benefits for his employees, and he advocates for policies that would redistribute wealth more fairly. Of course, he faces opposition from other wealthy individuals who are resistant to change. But Alex is determined to use his resources to make a positive impact on the world, even if it means giving up some of his own privilege. As he works toward a more altruistic society, Alex realizes that true happiness comes not from what you have, but from what you give. And he's proud to be using his wealth and influence to make the world a better place. Chapter 8. Katie was a successful businesswoman who had built her career from scratch. She had worked hard to reach the top, and she was proud of her accomplishments. But despite all her success, Katie had always felt that something was missing in her life. She had always wanted to do something more, something that would help others. One day, Katie was invited to a charity event. She had never been to one before, but she decided to go. As she walked around the room, she was amazed by the number of people who had come to support the cause. The event was raising money for a local hospital, and Katie was impressed by the dedication of the organizers. As she was leaving the event, she overheard a conversation between two people. They were talking about a group of volunteers who were going to a remote village in Africa to help build a school. Katie was immediately intrigued. She had always wanted to travel, and she had always been interested in helping others. The next day, Katie did some research and found out more about the volunteer program. It was run by a non-governmental organization that specialized in building schools and providing education to underprivileged children. Katie was excited by the prospect of doing something truly altruistic. She signed up for the program and began to prepare for her trip. She knew it would be hard work, but she was ready for the challenge. When she arrived in the village, Katie was struck by the poverty and hardship that she saw. But she was also inspired by the resilience and determination of the people. She worked hard every day, alongside the other volunteers, to build the school. It was a difficult task, but Katie never gave up. She was motivated by the knowledge that the school would provide education and hope for the children in the village. As the school took shape, Katie realized that she had found what had been missing in her life. She had found a sense of purpose, a way to help others and make a difference in the world. And she knew that she would continue to do good, not just on an individual level, but on a collective level too. Summary. Amidst all the challenges in the world, it can be easy to lose hope and forget the inherent goodness in people. But if you look closer, you'll see that acts of cooperation and altruism are everywhere. This is the key message in the book, The Power of Altruism, which delves into the importance of recognizing kindness and empathy, and incorporating them more fully into our lives. The book offers actionable advice on how to do this, starting with the power of meditation. Not only does meditation help to calm the mind and reduce stress, but it also has anti-aging effects. In a study conducted by Alan Wallace's Shamatha Project, participants who meditated for six hours a day for three months showed higher levels of telomerase, an enzyme associated with slowing the aging of cells. But beyond the personal benefits of meditation, the book emphasizes the importance of helping others and recognizing our interconnectedness. By focusing on the well-being of those around us, we can create a ripple effect of positivity and kindness. Throughout the book, examples of collective altruism are highlighted, from the rise of non-governmental organizations around the world to the way communities come together during crises such as hurricanes and fires. The book also emphasizes the importance of empathy and compassion in education, and how it can lead to better academic results and more harmonious classrooms. Overall, the power of altruism is a reminder that while there may be challenges in the world, there is also a great deal of goodness and generosity. By recognizing this and incorporating more altruism into our lives, we can help create a brighter future for ourselves and those around us. Now, the insights and knowledge I gained from reading Altruism were phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Trust me, you won't regret it.